Hi everybody, welcome to your weekly dose at home. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the visitor engagement team here at the Calgary Zoo. Today, we are at one of my all time favorite habitats, Penguin Plunge, and it's an extra special time of year. It's chick season. Today on your weekly dose, you met our latest addition, a yet to be named King Penguin Chick. But if you come back in a few months, you'll see something amazing. In the fall, one of my favorite penguin questions is, what on earth is that kiwi doing on the beach? King penguin chicks look extra special. They're gigantic, large, brown, and fluffy. And today on our weekly dose, we're gonna talk a little bit more about king penguin breeding in general, king penguin chick rearing, and we're gonna contrast it to one of the other species in the building that has a chick this year, the gentoo penguins. Let's start with kings. King penguins are the second largest penguin species in the world. They reach about my waist height, about a meter tall, and they are second only to the slightly more famous emperor penguin, made famous from some of your favorite movies. King penguin parents do a tremendous job of raising their chicks. It takes a really, really long time. But before we get into chicks, we gotta go back to the beginning and talk about how king penguins find a mate to begin with. They use their voices. When you come into Penguin Plunge, one of the things you'll notice is that it's really hard to tell different penguins apart. Here in the building, we use our wing banding system. Males are banded on the right, females are banded on the left, and every color pattern is different. That's how we tell them apart. So how do king penguins in the wild, or even here at Penguin Plunge, find their mates? Well, they use their voices. They each have unique, distinct calls that as humans, we can't always detect the variations in, but in a colony of 100,000, king penguins are able to communicate with their mates or their chicks just using their voices. Now, a lot of folks come to us and they go, is it true that penguins mate for life? And I'm sorry to break those hearts. Penguins are usually monogamous in their breeding season, but they're not always monogamous year over year. Sometimes we'll see the mates change up. And this is something we've observed here at the Calgary Zoo in our king penguin colony. If we're lucky, that will result in king penguins laying an egg. A king penguin egg is about this big, or about the size of my two fists together but king penguins put it somewhere extra special. King penguins don't build a nest. They keep their egg on their feet. That's right. They actually will nestle their egg between their feet, slump down, and their belly or their brood pouch will cover that egg to keep it warm. King penguin parents take turns incubating that egg, passing it back and forth from their feet every six to 10 days. They play an equal role in all of that egg incubation so the other parent can take a break, go off to swim and find food, and then come back for the swap. Once that king penguin chick hatches, that's when the work begins. King penguins will double in size every week for the first few months that they're born. And by the time they're about three months old, they are the same size as an adult. When visitors come see them here at the Calgary Zoo, they often ask, why is that king penguin chick bigger than the adult? And it's true, they actually will get to a point where they weigh more than their parents, packing on fat storage while they live their life on land. They will use that fat once they grow up and start to swim as their first burst of energy while they're learning their hunting skills. We are also very excited this year that we had a gentoo penguin chick hat to parents Cooper and Georgia. One of the big differences between king penguins and gentoo penguins is the length of that egg incubation. In gentoo penguins, it's a little over a month. It's not nearly as long as it is in king penguins. And once that egg hatches, the chick looks completely different. King penguin chicks are brown and fluffy. Their down is even colored all over their body. When you look at it close up, it actually almost looks like plant material. It's very, very dense and fluffy. Gentoo penguins also have fluffy feathers, but their coloration is a lot more classic penguin, 
white on the belly and a light uh, gray or black on their back. Gentoo penguins fledge or they start to change their feathers to a more waterproof feather by the time they're around three months old. And then we'll start to see them learning to swim, taking swimming lessons from their parents and then starting to eat on their own. Versus king penguins have one of the longest fledging times in all of birds. It can take almost a year for a king penguin chick to start to fledge. And it's a little bit of an awkward teenage phase when the king penguin chicks are losing their brown down and replacing it with the sleek white, black, and yellow plumage. You will notice that a juvenile king penguin, once it's fledged, isn't quite as bright as the adults. That's their sub-adult or juvenile plumage. And by the time they are into their second molt another year later, their colors get a lot brighter. We are so excited to welcome these two new additions to Penguin Plunge, and we hope you get a chance to see them, even though they are under the ever watchful eyes of their parents here in Penguin Plunge. Thank you so much for tuning into this edition of the Weekly Dose at Home. Make sure you click on the link for your weekly activity and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you for supporting wildlife conservation and everything our community does to help us here at the Calgary Zoo. We are so grateful to you.